uh, we haven't had a conversation, my friend, have we? Not yet, no. no not yet. And you were passing, and you very kindly agreed to be filmed. And you said you kind of believe in God, is that right? Yeah, I, um, I have trouble believing in, in, in a God which is sort of separate and, and ruling over us. But I, I, I'm definitely not an atheist, you know. Okay. You're not an atheist, you believe in God. Do you have any religion at all? Not really. I, uh, I studied Buddhism a little bit in, in school. Um, you studied what religion? Buddhism. Buddhism, okay. Uh, I, was, I was brought up a Christian. Um, I don't really know anything about uh, Islam or anything, any other religion really. Um, I'm quite interested in ancient religions, the sort of, uh, uh, what's it called, Gnosticism, um, uh, Zoro Zoroastrianism I've heard a little bit about. Uh, that's about it, really. While we were setting up the camera, uh, sorry, there's no cameraman here at the moment, so the camera's on a stand. Um, but while we were setting up the camera, you said to me you're a filmmaker? Yes. You make films, and your name is? Charles. Charles, okay, Charles, very, sounds very posh. Uh, yeah. Sounds very good, okay. Princess Prince Charles, of course. Of course, yeah. Okay, for maybe future King of England, which had the Queen's birthday, oh, yeah. 90th birthday. Okay, right, okay, Charles. Okay, Charles, Charles. Um, the question is this, Charles, to you, is that if there is a God, and you clearly believe there is a God, right, what is God doing up there, and what are we doing down here, or what's the purpose of our life? What we call existential questions. What is the purpose of existence? Do you have an answer to that? What's the purpose of existence? Something... I'm not sure what the purpose is. I think the purpose kind of is created by us through the experience of, of existing. I, I'm not sure if there's a preordained you know, purpose. Okay. I would suggest there has to be because if there is a creator, clearly he knows everything, he's almighty, he must have uh, made a purpose. There, sorry, I beg your pardon. He must have a purpose for making us. Clearly, he must do. Okay. Sorry about the singing of the Christians here. Uh, we preach here in the street, and they come along and sing and cause a bit of disruption. But we can't obviously stop them. That's why I don't know why they come here, just next to us. But they do. Okay. We've been here many, many years. They've come afterwards. Um, but anyway, okay, Charles. Uh, I would say there is a purpose, Charles. And uh, to tell us what that purpose is, this creator has sent many prophets. Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, Joseph, Jacob, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, all prophets of God, all came with the same message, okay? And to tell us why we're here on this earth and what's gonna happen after we die. That's, that's where we get the, our evidence from. But the question is, how do we know whether these prophets were genuine prophets or not? Because you said to me, you don't have a lot of time, you're waiting for somebody, I'm going to tell you very quickly, if that's okay with you, how we know. Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay. Your background, Christian? Yeah. You're from England, Charles? I am, yeah. You're, okay, uh, you're from England, Charles, and uh, um, you're from London? Uh, from Kent. From Kent, okay, which is southeast of England. Okay, the posh part of England. Exactly, yeah. Okay, the posh part of England. And that's especially with a name like Charles as well. <laughs> that's right, future King of England. Okay, fine, okay, Charles. Okay. When God sent these prophets, Charles, yeah. with the same message, people naturally rejected them, right? They didn't accept them. Sorry, you could face the camera a little bit, my friend, if you could do Charles, yeah? Yeah. Uh, people can see your reaction then as well. Okay, so people naturally rejected them. They said to them, you're liars, you're deluded, you're mad, you're possessed, you're crazy, when they came to mankind. The way the pe these prophets of Almighty God prove to the people that they were genuine prophets of God is by the miracles they performed. So these prophets of Almighty God perform miracles to show that they were genuine prophets of God. Jesus, as you know, probably from your Christian background, he brought the dead back to life, according to the Bible and according to the Quran. He killed the leper. He cured the blind with God's power. Okay, that's what Jesus did. Okay. After Jesus, God sent another prophet, and his name is Muhammad. Peace be upon him, right? You've heard of Muhammad, obviously. I've heard of him. I, I don't know much about him. I, I'd like to learn. Yeah, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with the same message of Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, David, Solomon, all the way back to Adam. And that message is a message of good news and a warning. It's not good news and bad news. It's good news and a warning. What is the good news? Good news is, number one, there is a creator. This creator is almighty, all-powerful, all-seeing, all-hearing, all-knowing. He's got no beginning. He's got no end. He is not male and he's not female. There is nothing like him. He loves us very much. 
We are his special, special creation. He loves very much. He has created us because he wanted to create a creation that would connect with him and worship him by choice. We have free will and free choice. However, he plans everything and there is predestiny. How does that work? It's because he's outside space, he's outside our time frame, and he might be outside time altogether. Sorry about the Christian singing here, as I said, the noise. Okay. Okay. I'm also apologizing to our viewers as well. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay. They, don't, they won't talk with me. The Christians, they're singing here. They won't talk with me because they'll know, they'll lose the argument and they'll have to become Muslim. That's true. That's a reality. I'll go and talk, I'll show you. I'll go and talk with them. They won't talk. Are they here because you're here? Try I think so because they came afterwards and they've got plenty of space in London to be here somewhere else. But they come along and they put, if you notice, they put the speakers towards us and sing. What's the point of that? I don't understand. But anyway, that's what they want to do. That's their choice. It's free will, free choice, I suppose. Okay, anyway, after Jesus, God sent another prophet, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yep, prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Do you know what the miracle was that he was given, Charles? No, what's that? The miracle he was given is the Quran, the book. The book itself is the miracle that proves Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet of Almighty God, peace be upon him. It's a proof that Islam is true, and in fact, it's the most powerful proof, I would suggest, that there is a God. So you were saying something? What, yeah, what, what's in the Quran that, that really? gives it the... Um, Miraculous. Yeah. Yeah, what gives makes a miracle? I'll tell you why. Now, the Quran is a book 1400 years old, Charles, and it's a book that's remained unchanged. It hasn't changed for 1400 years. Not just the opinion of Muslims, this is the opinion of Christian uh, scholars, Jewish scholars, atheist scholars, theologians, historians in general agree it's an old book, it hasn't changed. Now, it's an old book, it hasn't changed. What does it contain? This book, in spite of being 1400 years old and unchanged, it contains lots of scientifically accurate statements. Right. Statements about the observable universe, about embryology, about how the universe started, what we call the Big Bang Theory, yeah. not Sheldon and the comedy show, yeah. right? Okay, sorry, that's just a comedy show. Uh, expanding universe. Okay. Yep, gra how gravity works. In the Quran alludes to the Higgs boson particles. Really? Yes, it does. I can tell you that how it works. How, how that's explained in the Quran. The Quran talks about how mountains are constructed and the effect on the surface of the earth, how the water cycle works, how pain receptors for burning are in the skin. How. Uh, the Quran and also just as importantly Charles the Quran doesn't contain a single statement which contradicts established science it's got no mistakes in it you see if the Prophet Muhammad or the people around him had guessed things they might have got some things right you know at a stretch of the imagination but Charles I'm sure you'd agree that they would have got many things wrong about the universe yep yeah, yeah definitely yep, definitely but the Quran doesn't get a single thing wrong it doesn't make a single mistake if you show me one scientific error in the quran i'm happy to accept it's not from god powerful thing yeah. right the quran and now because you're short of time i'm going through this very quickly the quran can, is a book easy to memorize and millions of people charles have memorized this quran all over the world it was given to a man the prophet muhammad peace be upon him who couldn't even read or write okay yeah the prophet muhammad couldn't read or write and yet he was given these words he came to human beings mankind generally and told them these are words and they said to him you know you can't read and write and what are you doing where are you getting these words from amazing words of the quran okay the words have an effect of changing people's lives forever the book has got no contradictions in it even though it was revealed a little bit at a time over a 23 year period and the chronology in the Quran shows that it couldn't have been written all at once it had to be written as time passed as events happened over, over the course 23 years over Prophet Muhammad's lifetime 23 year period as the Muslims faced problems difficulties uh, the answers came in the Quran but it, it, it wasn't Muhammad that, that, that wrote it, it, it he didn't write it he couldn't read or write he would hear the words uh, from the Holy Spirit which we believe is a creation of God, not part of God. That's the difference. Okay. It's a title of an angel, in fact. Yeah, He would hear, hear these words. He would go and tell people, people around him. They would write it down. They would read it back to him. To, he would make sure that they got it right. And uh, that's how it was collected together. 
That's interesting. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Is it, so is it always been in the same language? It hasn't been translated. It's always. It was revealed in Arabic. It's kept in Arabic, yeah. and it's only called the Quran if it's in Arabic. If it's any other language, it's an approximate translation uh, because it can't be 100%. Uh, of course. Yeah. Once you change, you start losing, changing the meaning. Yeah. So we've always got the Arabic to refer to, and we only call it the Quran if it's in Arabic. Okay. And, and it says that in the Quran. The Arabic language, the way it's been used in the Quran, Charles, it's unique, it's powerful, and it, it's inimitable. It cannot be equaled. Okay. Yeah. And and not only that, there's God's challenge inside the Quran. God says in the Quran that no one can ever produce one surah, a surah is a cha like a chapter, like this. And this challenge has stood for 1400 years. And the shortest chapter is only three sentences. So the challenge in the Quran by God is that no one can produce three sentences in the Arabic language that match the eloquence, the language, the style, the science, and everything else about the Quran. And this is, that's a very powerful thing to say. And if it was a human being writing that, it would be a very arrogant statement to make. That my book is so brilliant, no one can ever write three sentences like my book. God says it, and only he can say it because he knows everything, and the past, the present, the future. Okay, And this challenge has stood for 1400 years. This book today, Charles, has produced the largest practice religion of 1.8 billion followers, and the fastest growing religion. Yeah. When you add these things together about the Quran, uh, you're a filmmaker, you're obviously a clever guy. You study at university? Uh, I did study at university. What did you study, Charles? Well, it's design for film. Um, and design I, in filmmaking? Yeah, and I take a lot of inspiration from the kind of religious side of things, even though I'm not too religious myself. You're a spiritual but person? You're a spiritual person? I'd say so, yeah. Fantastic. When you add these things about the Quran, would you agree, Charles, that it's a powerful book? It seems like it, yeah. without, without having read it, of course. No, without reading it, just the fact one atheist argued with me, against me and said, there's no God. Uh -huh. Then when he did eventually agree that it must be from God, he had to accept that there is a God. So from atheism, he became a theist. Then he had to accept Prophet Muhammad as a messenger of God. Peace be upon him, because the Quran says so. Then he said to me, this atheist said to me, just the fact that 1.8 billion people live by this book, believe in this book, and it's changed their lives, means this book is a miracle. And it must be from God. That's what he said. I'm not saying that's the only reason, but that's one. Uh, that's what he said. Atheists said this. Anyway, now what's the message in the Quran for you, Charles? The message for you, the f message for me, and message for all human beings here in Northwest London is this. For all human beings all over the world, there is a God. He loves very much. Our life is short. It's a test. It's going to come to an end. It doesn't matter whether you're rich and famous. Uh, look, I mean, the guy, Prince, the pop singer, he died recently, possibly from a drug overdose. Yeah, that's what they're saying now. Okay, we don't know that. But anyway, that's, yeah, that's, that's what the newspaper is saying. Many rich and even many rich people, famous people, they're not happy people. They're not happy people. Their money, their fame, their wealth hasn't bought happiness, which they thought it would do. The football players, the pop stars, the film stars, they end up uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, sex abuse, child abuse. Many of them attempt suicide. Some of them end up killing themselves. Why? Why are they not happy people? It's definitely, I mean, you, you say that this life is a test and that's I mean from experience myself it's very much felt like that um, so what is a test and how do we pass it well I don't know it's obviously something to do with finding out how to be happy isn't it yeah that's right well how do we be happy in the Quran God says only in the remembrance of God do hearts find peace only in the remembrance of God, the connection with God, remembering God, do hearts find peace and satisfaction. Words of the Quran. What is the message in the Quran? Is the message in the Quran that Jesus is wrong, peace be upon him, and Muhammad is right, peace be upon him? No. The message in the Quran is that Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, David, Solomon, Jesus and Muhammad all came with the correct message. We need to follow all of them.
Right. So what's the difference between us and Christianity? Christianity, the religion of Christianity, is saying Jesus is God. Part of a trinity. God incarnate. God in the flesh. If you read what Jesus says in the Bible, he never said this. He said, I am somebody sent by God. He refers it to himself more than 19 times as the Son of Man. That's right. He never ever said, I am God, pray to me. He never said, I am part of a trinity. He never said, I've come to die for your sins. That's what Christianity says. And all of these teachings, Charles, comes from the teachings of St. Paul. Christianity today is not following Jesus. It's not even following Jesus in the Bible. It's following St. Paul, whose works are at the end of the Bible. So God, out of his love and his mercy, has sent a... Sorry, if you want to face the camera a little bit, my friend. Sorry, there's no cameraman here, so uh, he won't, there's nobody to move the camera. Okay, so Jesus... Um, sorry. Yeah, so uh, 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 if we follow Jesus, if you follow Jesus, even if you follow Jesus in the Bible, would you end up being a Christian? No, you wouldn't. You know what would you do? You know what you'd be, end up being? A Saint Paul follower. You know. Well, if you follow Jesus, okay. if you follow Jesus' teachings in the Bible, do you know what religion you'd be? Jew. You'd be Muslim. Oh, really? You would, because if you look at Jesus. Well, uh, sorry, what you said? No, why is that? Why is that? That's a very good question. Some of his things were Jewish, I agree, but I'll tell you why you'd be a Muslim. Jesus, in the Bible, he prayed by putting his head on the ground. Who prays like that today? Okay. Why, why, why do you have to have the contact with the ground? That's what Jesus did. Okay. That's what Moses did. That's what Abraham did. We're not contacting the ground. We're not connecting with the ground. We're humbling ourselves to the Creator. We're saying, Creator, as a Muslim, we don't bow down to anybody. But to you, we are prepared to put our head on the ground and submit ourselves and say, in front of you, Creator, I'm absolutely nothing. Look, a human being compared with the size of the earth, we're, we're small. Compared with the solar system, we're tiny. Compared with the galaxy in the Milky Way, look how small we are. And what about the universe? You know, it's, it's just absolutely nothing. You know, we're less than a grain of sand compared with the earth. You see? Now, so we're humbling ourselves to the Creator. That's what we do. And that's how Jesus, Moses, and Abraham prayed in the Bible. And, uh, and Jesus, the followers of Jesus, the female followers of Jesus, they all used to cover their hair. They all wore a hijab. Jesus was circumcised. Muslim men should be circumcised. Jesus used to eat kosher food, never ate pork. The Bible says kosher food is killed in the same way as halal food. The animals are killed in the same way. Yep. Jesus fasted for 40 days in the same way that Muslims fast in Ramadan. Make sense? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And if you follow, if you look at Moses and Abraham and Noah in the Bible, again you'll see they were talking about Islam. By the way, do you know what the word Islam means, uh, Charles? No, I don't. The word Islam means submission to God. Peace through submission. Okay. So we don't do what we want, we do whatever God wants. We submit ourselves to Him. Um, okay. Um, so the, the idea of submission, sort of, you know, you, you have to be sure that the entity you're submitting to is... is God. Has the, has the right, you know... Um, uh, do you know what I'm sure. trying to say, right? Yes. Like, You're saying that it deserves worship. We need, we need to submit to the being that deserves our worship. And, and uh, will look out for you and yes. uh, has right. the right. That's why the definition of God in the Quran is very clear. It's very precise. Uh, there's no blasphemy. There's no trinity like Christianity. There's no idolatry like other religions. It's pure, pure monotheism in the absolute sense. And this is one of the beauties of Islam. Islam is absolutely purely monotheistic. And the word we use is Tawheed. It's pure and it's clear monotheism. I'll, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you something. Uh, Tawheed. Tawheed. Tawheed means absolute unity of God. God is one. What does that mean? He knows everything. 
sees everything, hears everything. There's nothing like him. He has no parents. He has no children. Um, he has no beginning. He has no end. Everything apart from him is an originated thing which he created out of nothingness. So there's nothing apart from him and whatever exists today was created by him from nothingness. Amazing, amazing power. He knows everything about everything. He knows everything that's knowable. Okay. He knows what everything is thinking. He knows what you're thinking right now. What I'm thinking right now. He knows what uh, everything is glorifying him. We don't even know they've got a language. God tells us. The pigeons that are flying here, the sun that's shining, it's all glorifying God. And we don't even know they've got a language. Now, so my invitation to you, because you're short of time, is to agree there is one creator. Right? Almighty God, the way I've described him. Could you agree with that? Um, I'm not sure if I'm ready to agree that with that. I, I can see that obviously it means a lot. Do you no, no, no. Do you agree there's a creator? Mm. At the beginning you said to me, yes, you believe there's a God, but you don't want to follow a religion. Or you don't follow a religion. Well, the thing is, I don't believe there is a separate God that, that has an agenda. That's, that's the thing. That's my thing. Okay, so no, are you saying, look, the universe, okay, could, is it not cleverly designed? You're a filmmaker. You design films, don't, doesn't the sound and everything have to be very accurate? The creator has to be separate from his creation. Because look, okay. because the creation, we can't say he's part of the creation. Look, there is intelligence in the design. If you look at the design of the universe, what I was saying was, you're a filmmaker, you design films, yeah. the sound, the film, it all has to match up. Yes? yes? Yeah. It has to be very precise. Hmm? Yes, otherwise yeah. it, does, it looks a bit strange. Definitely designed, definitely designed. The universe designed? The films are definitely yes, designed. That's right. The universe, is it designed? Uh, I don't think so. It has to be. It's very precise. Uh, do, you know, do you know a word called entropy? Uh, yeah. It's disorder of the particles of the universe. Uh, the yeah. co cooling down and... Um, no, no. Entropy is the disorder. No, it's the degree of disorder of the particles. It's the way of measuring time because scientists say entropy increases. That means disorder increases. It's a way of measuring time. Okay. Right. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's a noisy police cars and police vans. Okay, look, look. My friend, the universe is very precisely balanced. Not just the Earth, the whole universe. Professor Roger Penrose, professor of mathematics at Oxford University, he's worked out the probability of the universe being like this by chance. Sure, okay. The universe, not the Earth, the whole universe. Do you know what the probability is? It's 10 to the power of 10. Do you know what that means? A lot. <laughs> a lot. No, all of that in brackets to the power of 123 to 1. Okay. Okay. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, it's, it's not just chance that all of this exists. I agree. Right. So if you agree it's not chance, then, you, then you're saying there is a designer. Um, Can't have it both ways. Okay, well, I guess... I guess I'm not saying that there. You face the camera, my friend. I'm, I'm not trying to say that there was a designer who had it in mind and then designed it, but by chance. Perhaps, by chance? You can't have it both ways. Either it's chance or by design. No, well, by design, but by by um, continuous design. You know, we design it ourselves, and we don't. Uh, we don't. Do you design the universe? Look, look, the universe. No, no we didn't. I we didn't. Maybe I'm not sure. No, no, we didn't. Look, the Quran. Yeah. This is the proof. As I said, the most powerful proof there's a God. The Quran, could a book like this be produced 1400 years ago with all the science in it by human beings? Um, not through, not with the historical model we've, we've got at the moment. With any historical model. Look, if we wrote a book today, Charles, I'm sorry about the Christian singing here, but if we wrote a book today, could we get everything 100% right uh, and that would remain right in say two, three, four hundred years time? Uh, no. We can't. And this book is 1400 years old and it's got everything 100% right. 14, 1400. Uh, 1400 years old. Uh, in other words, about 600 years after the prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. 600 years after Jesus. This book was revealed by God, came down. Could someone at that time have written this? 
Uh, well, I mean, there was definitely a lot, um, some sort of knowledge that that is outside human beings. Yeah, outside what we know. That's right. There must be from the look, and the Quran is not just knowledge. People live by it. Yeah. They because of this book, they pray five times a day. They fast in Ramadan. They have close families. Children respect parents. Parents respect children. You won't find old people's homes in Muslim countries. Oh yeah, okay. That's right. People are a lot happier for connecting with God, being Muslims. It gives them happiness. And uh, that's, undoubtedly, you know. that's undoubtedly a good thing, definitely. That's right. So why don't, if you agree, undoubtedly it's a good thing, why don't you agree to try and connect with the Creator? Oh, I will. I will. I am trying to connect with... Well, that's it. He's answered you today. Okay. Look, one day we're going to get old. We're going to die. Yeah. You and I, we're going to face God Looking on the day of judgment. Sorry? Looking forward to it. Well, you can look forward to it if you have done good things and you've yeah. believed in Him and prayed to Him. Well, I, I, I believe that I will do good things. I, I'm no, not... Doing good things, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you're a good guy, right? But are you, have you got a connection with the Creator? No. I'm inviting you to connect. How do you connect? Look, this is how, very simple. Uh -huh. It's very simple. A computer, it might be the most complicated and expensive computer. But all you need to do to connect it is to plug it in. Simple. Okay. okay? Yeah. Whether it's, uh, it's the best computer in the world, once you've got electricity, it's got connection. This connection with the Creator is also very simple. Just like the computer. You need to believe in and say one sentence is I bear witness, I am a witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Almighty God. That's all. I agree, you're saying I agree that I won't pray to anybody or anything except Almighty God. No statue. Yeah, you, you agree. That's right. You will worship only God, which means that you will put your trust in Him, you love Him, you won't ask anybody for help in a spiritual sense except Him. And also in a worldly sense, if you need any help, you will turn to Him. Okay. Because He loves you and He will answer your prayers. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Are you happy to say that sentence? Um, well, the sentence is this. Let me tell you, Charles. Number one is, I know what you're saying. I bear witness, that means I'm sure, nothing should be worshipped. In other words, we don't worship Jesus. We don't worship Muhammad. Peace be upon both of them. We don't worship any statues or idols. We don't worship anything except Almighty God. Okay. The unseen God. The God of Abraham, Moses, Jesus. Are you happy to agree with that? I definitely agree, um, you know, what, what was it? I, I bear witness. Yes. Are you happy to say that and believe in that? Some some of it. No, no what of it? What are you? Look, you're saying I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship yeah. except Almighty God. Okay. Are you happy with that? And then it's just the Almighty God that, I, that I'm not really sure what, you know. So what are you worshipping then? I don't know. You know, like you're gonna worship yourself? By, by possibly. I mean, by saying. No, oh no, no. This is arrogance. Look, okay. God says in the Quran, there are people who have made themselves their God. Okay. The problem in this society is arrogance and pride. Uh -huh. That's why more people aren't becoming Muslims. Uh -huh. Okay. So you've got to get rid of your arrogance and pride, Charles. Okay, your main name may be Charles. You know, future King of England is also Prince Charles. But we've got to get rid of, get away from our pedestal and submit ourselves. We need to be prepared to acknowledge there is someone higher than us. Okay. That's the Creator, who made everything. We're absolutely nothing compared with the Earth. How can we compare ourselves with the Creator of the Universe? And we don't even know how, how many universes there are. We have to humble ourselves. If we don't humble ourselves, there is no success for us, my friend. And this message is the message of Jesus, Moses, Abraham and Muhammad. Peace be upon them and many other prophets. Peace be upon them all. Okay. So are you prepared to humble yourself to the Creator? This is my question. I, yeah, I'm prepared to start on the journey to, um, to think about doing that, to, to humble myself, to submit okay. myself. So do you agree that you will only pray to God? Um, I won't pray to anyone else. 
that's that's what you're saying then. Okay. So you say I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship. That means I won't worship anything uh -huh. except Almighty God. Okay. I bear witness that I will not worship anything. Or anybody. Or anybody. Except Almighty God. Except Almighty God. The entity that I believe in. The Creator. Well, I don't know about Creator, but the the, no, 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 it has the to be all creator. powerful entity. Yes, the all powerful yeah. entity. Okay. He's the Creator of the universe. Okay. Yep. If you say so. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Well, not if I say so. Do you agree this all powerful entity is okay. the Creator of the universe? Okay. Yeah. The Creator. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, say it again. Sorry. I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Almighty, the Creator, Almighty God. Okay. Um, I bear witness. That there is, there is nothing worthy, worthy of worship, of worship except, except Almighty God. Almighty God. Okay, you're happy with that? Yeah. Okay. So you start praying like that and you're going to feel a lot happier. Okay. Okay. Now, the second... Now, would you agree the Quran uh, is from this God? I really... I have no, no, no idea. No idea. Okay, look. No idea. Look. What is the Quran's message? Yes. The Quran's mes Quranic message is there is a creator, as I've said. Okay. And by the way, Jesus predicted the coming of the Quran. Did you know that? No. Yeah. In the Bible, Jesus says, I have many things to say to you and you cannot bear them now. When he, the spirit of truth comes, what he says won't be from himself, but what he hears. That's what he said in the Bible. Okay. We believe Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He said spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, bringing the words of Almighty God, the creator, uh, in the Bible, he's called the Father to us, and these words have been collected together to form the Quran. All right. Now, why is it the Quran and not some other book? The Quran is a book with all the science in it without any mistakes. It's a book that's telling you to do good things, which I'm sure you're doing now anyway, right? To, yeah. yeah, you are trying to, right? Trying to. You're a good guy, brilliant. But also, with that, with doing good things, Charles, you also need to start to pray to God by putting your head on the ground. Not here and now. When you go back, maybe when your partner doesn't see you, otherwise you think, oh no, Charles has become a Muslim or something, right? Start humbling yourself to the Creator. I'm sure you're a good guy and you'll feel a lot happier. And He will answer your prayers. It's a search, my friend. You know, you need to, we need to uh, become enlightened in a sense because enlightened, in the, enlightened of course means to receive God's light the light of guidance. You know, he loves us very much, my friend. Look, it doesn't matter how rich, I don't know how rich and famous you are, you're a filmmaker, you might be, okay? Okay, you're not at all, you're very humble. But you need to connect with the Creator, my friend. It's gonna bring you happiness. You have a partner, you said? Uh, yes. You're waiting for her. Look, if you love her and you're happy with her, you want to be with her in the hereafter, yes? Okay, yeah. If you don't connect with the Creator, my friend, you might not see her again. You might not see anybody again. Yeah. That's what, this is not my opinion. This is the message of Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, David, Solomon, Joseph, Jacob, and Muhammad. Peace be upon all of them. You see? And uh, have you lost people uh, in your family that have died? Uh, just, Friends? Just grandparents. Yeah. Would you like to see them again? Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. But I, I, I've come to terms with... No, you've come to terms with it. You don't need to. Inshallah, God willing, you will see them again. Okay. Connect with the Creator. And there's another life. That's what the, all the prophets said. Now, it's not, it's not pie in the sky. It's not cast in the sky. There is evidence. The Quran. 1.8 billion people, at least, live by this book. What is the book saying? Connect with the Creator, which you've agreed to do. I'll give it a go, yeah. Yeah, give it a go? Yeah, I'll give uh, Islam a go. Really? You'll give Islam a go? Okay. In that case, you need to say the second sentence also. Okay. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Okay, okay. Second sentence is, and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his servant, God's servant, and God's messenger. And if you say that, you're a Muslim. No, really? Yeah, you're a Muslim. And then you can give Islam a go, as you said. Okay? Yeah. You're, you're happy with that? Yeah. I'll okay. Sure. Okay. So you say, and I bear witness and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his servant, that's God's servant, and God's messenger. Is God's servant and his messenger. You happy with that? Yeah. Okay, then you're a Muslim now. That's it. Now, brilliant. Sounds good? Sounds good. Sounds good to me. That's good, thank God. Now, you repeat the same words again okay. in Arabic. But could you tell me, like, what, you know, what, where they come from and, like, like, what they mean? 
Yeah. Right, okay. The word, okay. The, the, the words in English again. If you repeat the words in English, okay. right, just to make it clear again, you say, "I bear witness." I bear witness that there is nothing. Okay. By the way, we use the word Allah for God. Yeah. Yeah. Are you happy with the word Allah for God? Sure. Yeah. Okay. And there's and Allah is uh, the name of God, and it's the way I've described him to you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Almighty, all powerful, all seeing, all hearing, and not male, not female, no beginning, no end. Okay. Um, uh, there is nothing like him. He's got no parents. He's got no children. You happy with that? Sure. Yeah. yeah okay. I, you say repeat that. Say the words in English first, my friend. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship. That there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him. That Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his servant. Is his servant and his messenger and his messenger. Right. In same word, exactly the same you're saying in Arabic. Okay. Right. Ashhadu, Ashhadu, an, an, la, la, ilaha, ilaha, illallah, illallah, wa, wa, ashhadu, ashhadu, anna, anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, abduhu, abduhu, wa, wa, rasulahu. Nasul Rasulahu Rasulahu That's it Congratulations you're Muslim Great. It's a very You happy with that? Yeah I am quite happy Yeah, You're very happy You'll be very happy my friend Look It's a very very big thing mm -hmm. Allah says in the Quran God says in the Quran No one can believe Except with his permission Okay He's got to give permission The creator of the universe Has got to give permission For someone to become a Muslim Right okay isn't that amazing? Yeah, I've never heard that before. Yeah, imagine if the Queen of England had to give permission for something to happen. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be like, wow. <laughs> Prime Minister of England had to give permission for something to happen. You say, wow. President Obama had to give permission for something to happen. You say, whoa, he gave me permission. <laughs> this is not President Obama. Yeah. This is not David Cameron. This is not Queen Elizabeth of England. This is the creator of the universe has given permission for you to enter this that means he has chosen you to be his friend he has chosen you to go into paradise he has chosen you to be saved from the hellfire sounds great sounds great that's a big thing yeah definitely yeah. and it means all your past sins are forgiven oh that's good that's right. you're like a newborn baby yeah. that's right you know the christians talk about born again yeah. this is the way to be born again because the Prophet Muhammad said, peace be upon him, anyone who says these words and believes them to be true, of course, all their past sins are forgiven. They're like a newborn baby. Because look, you've established a contract with the Creator. How can He let you down? What is your contract? The contract is, the Creator has made a contract. The contract is, you connect with Him, you know Him, and to worship Him. And He is going to give you paradise. That's his contract. You, by agreeing, by saying those sentences, you've agreed to the contract. Okay. What's, uh, so what were the words again in Arabic? I bear, you, in Arabic? Yeah. Ashhadu an la... Do you want to say it again? Yeah. Okay. Ashhadu. Ashhadu an la... Ashhadu an la... Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Ashhadu an la... Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan Muhammadan Abduhu Abduhu Wa, wa Rasulahu Rasulahu so Why do you want to say it again? Well, I just want to learn it. Let's say yes. What, I'll, write, I'll write them down for you. Yeah, okay. I'll give you a book with them. Yeah, you keep saying those words. Because this creator is not a man or a woman. Very, a very powerful being. You can look. I'm going to say to you, don't underestimate his power. That's what people say. But the reality is, you will underestimate his power. All of us do. We just cannot imagine the power of this creator. Look, you could, for example, be in a situation, for example, let's say uh, in a disaster situation. Maybe your car is skidding. It's happened to me. And you say, please God, save me. In that split second, he saves you. Right? A situation happened when the wife, a lady came and complained about her husband to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay? About her husband. She complained. And she said, my husband's whatever, you know, not very nice or something. The Prophet Muhammad, uh, the answer came down in Revelation. And it's part of the Quran. Now, 
Aisha, one of the wives of the wife of the Prophet Muhammad, one of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad, peace on him, she was in the same room. She said, Allah, Almighty God, above the seven heavens is Allah. He's above his throne. He's above the heavens. He heard her complaint and he revealed the answer. And now it's part of the Quran. She said, I was in the same room with the Prophet Muhammad. I didn't hear her complaining. I didn't hear her complaint. You see the point? He hears everything. He's very, very powerful. And what can we look forward to in the hereafter? In the here, hereafter, we can look forward to paradise. We can look forward to paradise. Rivers of milk, honey, and wine. River of milk, the taste doesn't alter, God says in the Quran. How can we imagine a river of milk, or river of honey, or river of wine? By the way, the wine is not wine with the disadvantages of the worldly wine. It's got the benefits, advantages, without the disadvantages. Sounds okay? Sounds good. Sounds good, okay. Beautiful partners to live with, right? There's something greater than that in paradise. Do you know what the something greater is that God promises in the Quran? No, what's that? God says in the Quran that people that go into paradise, they will be given paradise, but something greater than that. Extra. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him explained. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon, peace be upon him explained that something extra will be that God will say to us, "I am pleased with you today, and I'll never be displeased with you again." And when he says that, a great sense of serenity, serenity will descend upon us. We're going to feel really, really happy. Okay. So you're saying that that happens after you die? And after you die, day of judgment, and there's paradise. Judgment, paradise, and then after the paradise, in he's, the paradise. he's in the paradise. He yes, says, God will speak to us, and okay. God will speak to us and say that today I'm pleased with you, and I'll never be displeased with you again. Now, there is something even greater than paradise that God promises in the Quran, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us. Do you know what that is? No, it's not. Okay. There's something greater than paradise, and we can't imagine something greater than paradise because paradise, God says in the Quran. See, you will have things in paradise which no eye has ever seen and no heart can imagine. You're a filmmaker, you make films, right? Imagine if you made a film that was the best film ever. You'd be happy about it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah you'd be definitely happy. You're a filmmaker. Okay, you're, you're an English filmmaker. Brilliant. Imagine that in paradise you'll do things which are better than that. If you like cars, you'll be given the best car. If you love beautiful food you'll be given the best food okay and you don't need to worry about calories and losing weight and all this stuff it's a fantastic place right there is something even greater than paradise the prophet muhammad told us what is that he said you will be able to s god has covered his face with a covering of light a covering of light covering of why is he covered his face with a covering light out of mercy for us out of his love for us because if we looked at god's face directly we're on the earth we'd burn up uh, that's where that comes from. i've, heard, I've yes. heard that before i didn't know where that's that came right. from that's mm. right if we look at the sun today okay and the sun is shining a little bit the sun doesn't shine very often in london as you know <laughs> it doesn't okay it does it does shine fairly often but not very often okay if we look at the sun directly we'd go blind Right? We wouldn't, wouldn't we? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, we'd go blind. But imagine trying to look at God's light. There are stars in the universe which are more than, I believe, a hundred million times brighter than the sun. Imagine looking at that light. It'd be impossible. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to. But imagine trying to look at God's light. Or the light. Yeah, okay. So God has covered his face with a covering of light. The people that go into paradise, the special people, he will remove that covering of light and we will be able to see the face of Almighty God. Okay. Are there any, is there ever any description? No. No. no, no. Well, the thing is, we don't want to guess and speculate a description of the face of Almighty God uh, because the Quran doesn't s describe it and the Prophet Muhammad didn't describe it so we don't okay what that means I've got no idea whatsoever uh, people can guess 
but that's it that's guesswork and we don't want to guess it's it's dangerous you know we don't want to guess things so that's all we can look forward to sounds good yeah there's one one more thing i wanted yeah. to ask um you mentioned seven heavens is that um is that like a uh, a cultural thing or like what what's that about yes why are there seven heavens that's a very good question there are multiple heavens there are multiple layers of heaven the prophet muhammad said peace be upon him and he said the highest heaven is called jannatul firdaus paradise of firdaus firdaus is the name of the top paradise and the prophet muhammad said when you pray don't just ask for heaven or paradise but ask for the top paradise ask for firdaus okay, okay and that's what we should do so there are many heavens and this is the top heaven okay and uh, so that's what we pray for so pray to god he loves very much he loves it very much okay so we don't pray to anybody now let us say uh, now let me just tell you six things that we believe in to be a muslim very important six things we believe in to be muslim what are they yeah. and uh I, okay number one we believe in almighty god Almighty, all powerful all seeing all hearing all knowing no beginning no end uh there is nothing whatsoever like him and uh he's absolutely perfect um uh, and everything apart from him is something he made okay that's the creator number one number two we believe in the angels of god angels are god's workers they do whatever god tells them to do they share none of his sovereignty none of his power number three we believe in the books of god god out of his love and his mercy has sent down books from god uh, from himself words of god for example some scripture given to the prophet abraham peace be upon him torah Ten Commandments given to Moses, peace be upon him. The Psalms given to David, peace be upon him. Right? Uh, Injil or Gospel given to Jesus, peace be upon him. And finally, the Quran given to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and peace be upon all the prophets. Okay? Do you, okay. Do you think that one about scripture, do you think that. Um Obviously, because of the historical context, it's 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 what written word. But do you think nowadays it could be other media? You know, like um, what God sending down? Yeah, like okay, no, the what? Quran is the law. God could send down as He wishes. Yeah. God does guidance. God guides us through uh, tawfiq. It's called tawfiq, which means uh, through guidance. He guides us. He's guiding all of us. I mean, He guided you to be here today to become a Muslim. Okay. okay, he guided you. It's not my choice or your choice. Ultimately, he chooses whoever he wants. Okay. Just like you choose whoever comes to your house or wherever you live, you choose the people that come to your house the same way he chooses whoever goes into paradise and whoever he sees or whoever sees him. Sorry, he sees everything, but whoever sees him. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and the Quran is the last book from God. There will be no more books after the Quran now. Oh, really? okay. Yeah, there won't be. Quran is the last book by which human beings will be judged on the Day of Judgment. Uh, and the, because, it's the last book. It's uh, been preserved. Mm. God says in the Quran that He has um, perfected His uh, the religion for us. Uh, okay. He has completed His favor upon us and chosen Islam as a way of life for us and that islam means of course submission to almighty god as i mentioned earlier yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense yeah it makes sense okay. Okay. so one god we believe in yeah. almighty god two we believe in angels of god yeah thirdly we believe in the books of god fourthly we believe in prophets of almighty god the first man was adam he was also the first prophet the last prophet of almighty god is muhammad peace be upon him and there have been multitude of prophets in between some of them we know about some of them we don't know about the ones we know about are people like abraham moses david solomon joseph jacob uh noah we know about and and some others we know about and many we don't know about we don't know the names yeah. okay so one god angels of god books of god prophets of god fifthly we believe in the day of judgment yeah. when god will be the judge and heaven and hell okay yeah so are there, are there different different levels of hell as well as heaven uh, there are different levels of hell as well we know because the prophet muhammad said that one of his uncles who used to help him a lot but didn't become a muslim he said that he would be given the least punishment in hellfire and that punishment would be he would be given shoes to wear and the shoes would have a f have a fire in them they'd be made of fire that's been painful yeah. that's the least punishment sure. imagine the highest punishment mm -hmm. may, may, Allah, may Allah protect us all of us right okay
Now, uh, sixthly, we believe in predestiny and pre-knowledge. God knows everything and everything has been planned by him. Okay. How does that work with free will? I did explain earlier on, do you remember? how they were Outside of time. Very good. God bless you. You've got a good memory. You're a clever guy. You're a clever guy. Okay, okay. So, he's, uh, so there is predestiny and pre-knowledge. It's called Qadr and Qadar. The reason works is because God is outside our time frame and he might be outside time altogether. Okay, uh, there's a difference of opinion with outside time altogether, but it's certainly outside our time frame. In other words, his time scale is different from our time scale. God says that his day is not like our day. Um, okay, so that's it. You uh, you agree with those uh, six beliefs of a Muslim, my friend? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll look into them. You know, I'll yeah. keep. Uh, yeah, look into uh, them, detail them. It's a look. Most important thing is ask him to guide you. He loves you. He loves all of us. He knows us. He wants to guide us. You know, he wants us to go into paradise, but we've got to make an effort. If we're not good enough, if we're arrogant. If we're proud, we can't go into paradise. You know, how can we go into paradise if we think that we're cleverer than God? Or as clever as God? Or we're not prepared to humble ourselves to God? Make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what do you need to do now? Okay, you've said the words, you become a Muslim. It's a very, very big thing. The Prophet Muhammad recommended that after you've said the words, you should have a shower, a bath. Just as all the dirt's washed away, all your sins are washed away as well. Okay. Saying the words is enough, but it's better to wash as well. Okay, okay. that's what you should do, I would suggest, uh, Charles. Okay. And uh, start praying to God. And the other things, you do them gradually as your love for God increases. If you try too much, it'll be too heavy for you. Sure. So try and do the prayers first. You're a spiritual guy. When I stopped you, you said you believed in God, you don't have a religion, right? You've got a path now. Apart from doing good things, pray five times a day, okay? And what is prayer? Prayer is thanking Him, glorifying Him, and asking Him for help, okay? And uh, it's a good thing. And the more you ask Him, the more He loves you. If I ask you for something, Charles, you might get a bit annoyed. You might, if I said to you, Charles, if I was your friend, right? And I said, Charles, can you give me a hundred pounds? You say, okay, fine, here we are, a hundred quid, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. right, yep. And if I said, next time I said to you, oh, can I have another hundred pounds? I think this guy's always asking for money, right? There'll come a point where you get fed up. Yeah, you say, well, why can't you just, why do you have to keep asking me? Why can't you work yourself? Or if you are working yourself, I'm sorry, I can't give you the money, right? Yeah. But the Creator, He n loves us. The more we ask Him, the more He loves us. So He, he wants us to depend on Him? We depend on Him anyway. But if we show that we depend on Him by turning to Him, which means being humble, if we turn to Him, He loves us more. And God says in the Quran, the more we thank Him, the more He loves us. So you say to Him, God, thank you for giving me a nice partner. Thank you for giving me a nice car. Thank you for giving me a job. He'll give you more. It's a win-win situation. We can't lose. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. And you're going to be a lot happier. But, can I tell you, Charles, yeah. that alhamdulillah, now you've become a Muslim, it doesn't mean that it's all a bed of roses. You will face difficulty. Remember, this life is a test. It's an examination. It's a place where you have to become really good to be able to see, be good enough to go into his paradise to see him right so therefore we have to try our best right so yes he will give you difficulties and tests god says in the quran he doesn't test anyone beyond their capacity he knows how much you can put up with and he's going to test you according to that right. all of us he'll test us we'll have difficulties but keep turning to him the more you love him the more he'll test you and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that all the Prophets were tested and I was tested most amongst the Prophets. The Prophet Muhammad had hard tests. His son died. Uh, his other, many of his children died. Okay. When they were young. Okay. Uh, he faced difficulty. He faced oppression from the non-Muslims. Okay. His followers were uh, oppressed tortured, sometimes killed. 
Muslims are today facing a huge amount of Islamophobia. Yeah, a huge amount of propaganda. And Christians say to me, well, there must be some truth in it. I say, no, look, Jesus was a very innocent guy, a very good guy. Why did the Romans want to kill him? Christianity says they did kill him. What did he do wrong? That's a good point. Yeah. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything bad. So why do they want to kill him, the Romans? Because, uh, because the devil, who is against us, by the way, there is a devil. The devil, who is against us, especially now that you've become a Muslim, even more against you now. He's gonna, yeah, he is. Oh, he's a big enemy now. Yes. What's his name, or what, like? The devil's name. He was called Iblis. That's his name. Uh, where the word diabolical comes from, Iblis. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. But his name now is the devil, the Shaitan, Shaitan or Satan. The word Satan comes from. <laughs> and he's out there to take you away from God. Excuse me. <laughs> So it's just cold air thing. Okay. So here now he's not he's not just one. The devil has got a whole army of spirits, they call jinn, and human beings. He's got an army. His followers, the evil people. Do they live do they live amongst humans or in physical form? Yeah. The jinn uh with the equivalent the nearest word is like spirits really. I can't it's not exactly spirits, but that sort of thing. Do they live? Yes, they do live here, right, on the earth. We can't see them. Okay. When we're doing good things, there might be some good ones listening. They do affect people, the bad ones. They get jealous of human beings. If someone's doing well, they're looking good, they become jealous and they can go inside your mind. They can affect your mind. And this is what possession is. They can possess you, the devils. So we have to be careful. So we have to continuously ask God to protect against the devil. And the devil is continuously trying to create hatred between people. And two of the ways he does this is uh, gambling and alcohol. And of course, with alcohol, there's, there are drugs. These are some of the things he uses to create enmity between mankind, hatred between people. And uh, also, he tries his best the Prophet Muhammad told us one of the ways he tried, one of his uh, ways he tries to work is by creating hatred between people and their partners, between you and your partner, or like you and your wife. Okay, he does that. Um, and you can see in this society, marriages are always breaking up, partnerships are always breaking up because this is what the devil wants. He wants people to hate each other, he wants people to harm animals harm the environment, harm anything, just do evil, you know, uh, uh, sleep around, be bad people generally, you know, just bad things. We all know what good and bad is, and that's what he wants. Because the reason he wants that is because he made mistake of, re of disobeying God, we're told in the Quran, and he wants now everyone else to disobey God, okay. just like him. So they end up in hellfire where he's going to end up. That's what God has promised him. Uh, so why has God given him free reign on the earth? It's because God allowed him when he asked God. He said to God, you've created these human beings. I can take many of these with me to the fire. And I'll mislead them if you give me a chance. So God has given him a chance until the day of judgment. Do what you like. Okay, he's given, he's got some power. He was created by, the, by God. The devil was created by God and God knows all of this, but he's given him a chance. But if we ask God to protect us, the devil can't do anything to us, but he will try best. One of the ways he works is by whispering in our mind, evil thoughts. He may say to you, Charles, forget Islam. You become a Muslim now, forget Islam. He might say to you, Islam is bad. Muslims are terrorists. Muslims are bad people. It's not true. There are 1.8 billion Muslims. Just because a few thousand or a few hundred are terrorists or mad people, it's not because of Islam. It's not because they were Muslims. They're just bad people. Hitler was a Christian, a big terrorist. Look what he did to the Jewish people. Um, Rwanda, 
Hooters and Tootsies killing each other. They're both Christian nations. Uh, Bosnia. Muslims were killed by the Croatians and the Serbs. Croatian Serbs, both Christians. Yeah, uh, all over the world. And it isn't. And Buddhists aren't uh, all pacifists. You can see what's happening in Sri Lanka and Burma to the uh, to the uh, the Muslims there. Okay, so you know, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah. You, you read that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're well informed. You see. So, but Islam itself, it's pure, it's clean, and God says in the Quran, a book in which there's no crookedness. There's nothing bad in the Quran. Everything is about doing good as much as you can. And by the way, don't underestimate anything as being too small, God says in the Quran. You know, every single atom's weight of good will add up on the Day of Judgment. On the Day of Judgment, when we face Almighty God, there will be a balance set up. On that balance, will be, paid, will be placed our deeds, our good deeds and bad deeds. And then God will decide who goes into paradise. And uh, by doing lots of good deeds, uh, uh, it'll be easier, inshallah, God willing, for us to go into paradise. So do as much good as you can. The Prophet Muhammad, for example, the Prophet Muhammad once talked about extra, extol the uh, advantages of charity. Okay. They are born of charity. And some people felt they couldn't give in charity. They're very poor people. The Prophet Muhammad said to them, every single word you say praising God, Subhanallah, which means glory to be God, to, to God, is a charity. Every time you say Alhamdulillah, which means all praises for God, is a charity. Alhamdulillah. Very good. You picked that up very quickly. Have you heard it before? No, no. You've got very good. That's right. La ilaha illallah, which is the part of the, what you said to become a Muslim, which means nothing should be worshipped except Allah, is also a charity. The Prophet Muhammad told us, peace be upon him. He said removing something harmful from the path is a charity. Helping someone load a, their cart is a charity. Okay. And uh, smiling at people in the street. You're always smiling, I can see. You're a good guy is a charity. The okay. Prophet Muhammad said smiling at people in the street is a charity. You know, being, you know, having a happy disposition, smiling. Whatever you're facing, always be happy. Okay? And don't complain to people. The Prophet Muhammad told us, only complain to whom? Uh, to God, right? That's right. Only complain to God. Because God is the only one who can do anything about it. You moan and groan to people, they might sympathize with you, they might empathize with you, but they can't do very much, usually. Agreed? Sure, yeah, yeah. That's right. But God can do everything and anything. Complain to Him. Okay. Turn to Him and uh, you'll never be disappointed. Okay. Sounds good? Yeah, will do. So, do you have any other questions? You become a Muslim now, as I said. Take it easy, take it gently, start praying, Charles, and and you will face difficulty, but keep turning to Him. Don't give up. Whatever happens, don't give up in your faith in Him. Whether you see people dying, whether you suffer disease, whether you feel difficulty, whether you lose your job, whether whatever happens, you don't give up faith in Him because He's the one and the only one you should and you can turn to. And He's the one, He may be testing you. Things that happen could be a test. It could also be a punishment. So if things happen to you, look at your life and say, look, am I doing something wrong? Yeah. Am I doing good things? Am I doing anything bad? Am I following the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Am I not following the Prophet Muhammad? Prophet Muhammad only did good things, peace be upon him. So if you want an example to follow, follow him. And that's what we should follow as Muslims. Sorry. So that's what we should do. Any questions, Charles? I don't think so. I mean, I've got a lot to um, think about. I've got a lot to learn. Um, nothing I could really ask right now, I think. No, thank you. Congratulations, you're a Muslim. It's a very, very big thing. Um, and turn to him and you'll feel your life improving. You'll find that. Look, I'm not saying you'll get a better job tomorrow. You'll make the best film tomorrow. But you'll feel, look, contentment and happiness is really the biggest thing on this earth, right? And you're going to feel a lot more content, a lot more happy within yourself, you know? People find that their partners, when they first met them, they were happy with them. After a while, it doesn't matter what they buy them, what they give them, they're not happy. Why are they unhappy? Why are they not content? It's because this is what the devil wants. 
It's because of the lack of connection with the Creator. So you turn to the Creator, you're going to be happy. Your relationship with your partner will improve. Your relationship with your parents will improve. Your relationship with your children, if you have any children, will improve. And you will face difficulty and tests, but you'll find things overall get better and better. Sounds good? No other questions? No, no, no. Okay. Congratulations, my friend. You're a Muslim. Congratulations. I'll call the brothers over. They'll come and give you a hug and embrace. There's one or two brothers here. Most brothers haven't turned up yet. Uh, they'll turn up a bit later because we just started. We just set up. I'll call them over. They can meet you. And congratulations again. Can I give you a hug? Is that okay? I know it's not a very English thing today to do, as someone said. But that's what we do as Muslims. So we'll give you a hug. And congratulations. You become a Muslim. Very, very big thing. Please pray for us. Play for our viewers and uh, you are very very privileged and honored like all Muslims are congratulations my dear brother yes. yes of course we'll give you all the information yeah of course you can yes of course you can Charles so you're Charles uh, you become a Muslim Prince Charles is gonna become the king of England yeah yeah and you are not not just you're going to be king of England, but you're going to hopefully become like a king because you're going to go into paradise. Sounds better than Prince Charles to me. It does, definitely. So Charles, I think, you've, you're, I think you're in a better position than Prince Charles, yeah. future king of England. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that, yeah. I'd agree with that as well. Congratulations again, my friend. <laughs> تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياء في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني وقال إنني من المسلمين